Hello and welcome everybody to a new Age of Empires 2 video. Uh, here I am today with Sijin, the project lead for Forgotten Empires, and we are going to discuss Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition as it is less than a month away. Uh, Sijin, how you doing, man? Uh, doing well. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So uh, many people who are listening to this are excited for Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. And many people might not know who Forgotten Empires is and who you are. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, as you said, I'm the project lead uh, at Forgotten Empires on uh, Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. I was also uh, in that role on Age of Empires 1 Definitive Edition and then all the expansions uh, that came to Age of Empires 2 HD uh, over the past, uh, I would say, five years? No, six years by now. Yep. Goodness me, time flies. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, that's basically what I've been doing. Uh, Forgotten Empires actually kind of originated from the community. Uh, we started, I think, late 2012, and then uh, I think in 2013, when the HD edition came out, uh, we also uh, brought the Forgotten expansion, uh, what's in the name, uh, to, to the game. And then afterwards, we made much more expansions and uh, added more civilizations, more content, more campaigns uh, to the series. So yeah, we we came from the community. We're still very much in touch with the community, and uh, that's kind of how we got into the series, and that's how we are now working on uh, the Definitive Edition. Yeah, that's awesome. I feel like many people might not be able to tie in the fact that the Forgotten Expansion was actually started off by Forgotten Empires, leading to today, where you are heavily involved in this new, exciting Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. So um, everyone, everyone's excited, but lots of people have questions, and many people are, are awaiting the release of the game. Um, so I believe the initial announcement for Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition was about two years ago, right? Uh, something like that. Yeah, so there was a big event uh, alongside Gamescom, and I believe it was 2017. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, Age of Empires uh, 1 was then uh, announced, or like, yeah, we're, we're going to release soon. But at the same time, there was this big event uh, where, where basically it was announced that we're going to also do Age of Empires 2D, Age of Empires 2D, and Age of Empires 4 in the future as yeah. well. So, yeah, that got a lot of people uh, excited and, and kind of also back into the series, like, holy shit, this, this series is still going? Yeah. Great. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it was one of many things, I think, that started to get a lot of people to pay attention to Age of Empires 2 again. Uh, and I got to say, we're so close now. Um, I'm getting really excited myself because I've known the game so well for the last few years. We know the meta, we knew the civs, we know how everything works. I'm excited to see some some changes and some additions to Age of Empires 2. And so since we got the introduction out of the way, I kind of want to go towards that now with our discussion. Uh Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition is going to have new civilizations and new campaigns and, and potentially new balance, right, Sijin? Yes. So I, I definitely want to start with balance because especially <laughs> in the, the competitive community, that's always like the topic that's been talked about. Yeah. Like, oh, what you going to do with balance? I'm like, well, we're doing a lot in the game. Yeah. But balance as well. Uh, so the thing with balance, our, our kind of view on balance has not really changed over the past five, six years. Mm -hmm. What we always try to do is just make it better. Yeah. Like, we're not going wild, we're not going crazy, and that's kind of what we're just going to continue doing. Um, we, we try to take a somewhat tempered approach. Like, we don't want to um, be too reactive. Um, like, a perfect example, I think, is like a lot of people feel like, oh, the Khmer uh, are a bit, uh, a bit weak in certain Mm -hmm. points of the game yeah but at the same time i also hear a lot of people saying well, yeah i don't think the Khmer are fully figured out yet yeah like, yeah uh, the, the the house bonus like people are not completely used to it same with the malai like it requires a bit of a build order change that people are not really used to mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time we we do recognize like the Khmer need some work but at the same time we're like okay let's let's not be too reactive let's see how things go um, I do believe they do get some boosts uh, in the E, or at least some changes. Okay, there. okay. Um, so, yeah, and but it's the same for all the civilizations, really. Like, what we really try to do is, like, bring the civilizations closer to each other. We want to make sure that the win rate of all civilizations is kind of between 45 and 55%. Yeah. Um, and then, then you have a pretty well-balanced game. Okay. And I think at this point, we're, we're already at a 
I would say I'm, I'm quite uh, quite happy with where the game is at. Yes. But uh, yeah, we'll, there, there's always room for improvement. Okay. Always. Yeah, I, I feel like that was one of the big questions that I would get is, uh, is the game going to change drastically? And so it's good to hear that the game is going to still stick to what people love and what has worked for 20 years. Uh, so expansions. Uh, we've had, let's see, I, I'm going to probably fail with this, but uh, there was Age of Kings, then there's Age of Conquerors, then there was uh, the Forgotten expansion. After that was, I always get the order wrong, I know we have Rise of Rajas. Um, was uh, First African Kingdoms. African then Kingdoms, Rise then Rise of Rajas. <laughs> yeah, poor African Kingdoms is always forgotten. <laughs> uh, yep. And now we're going to have, uh, from the announcement, four new civilizations. Um, now, I, I don't know exactly how much has been talked about publicly here, but uh, if you would be able to give the people a tidbit on the exciting new civilizations or what the expansion is going to mean for us, that would be great. Yeah, so the new uh, civilizations, uh, well, the, the theme of the, the theme of the expansion is the Lost Khans. Okay. Um, so we're kind of focusing on Central Asia, Eastern Europe, kind of what happened after Genghis Khan, uh, kind of, yeah, left behind <laughs> what he left behind yeah, in that yeah. area. Uh, and also kind of to the run-up to it. Uh, but basically, that's, that's the theme. So we have um, civilizations that, uh, if you like playing with the Mongols, you will totally love playing with those new civilizations as well. They're very uh, cavalry focused, uh, cavalry archers as well, uh, and, and all kinds of variations to that. So we have the, the Lithuanians and the Bulgarians in Eastern Europe, and then we have the Kamans and the Tatars in, uh, in Central Asia. And that's kind of, yeah, the gameplay and uh, the exact details of the civilizations. Yep. Uh, we have not given those out yet, I believe. Yeah, okay. Uh, we have, we have shown some, I think, uh, during the ECL show match, for example, uh, we played with uh, some of the new civilizations. Uh, so, yeah, there's there's definitely more nitty-gritty details uh, in those videos. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I don't think this is probably the time and place to go into the super nitty-gritty details. But sure, sure. There is some information out there. Yeah. Well, I know, I know um, that some of the ECL show match is going to be shown while we're discussing this now. So viewers who are listening mm. could see... Uh, some of the gameplay, I believe it was Doubt and uh, Tato uh, in one of the, the higher level games. Um, yes. So that's actually really exciting for me uh, because the meta, you know, there's always shifts. But when there's additions in civilizations, I found that some of those newer civilizations can kind of set the trend for the direction that the meta can go. Um, and I know that there was a shift from heavy scout play years back to recently a lot of man-at-arms and stuff. And I feel like mm -hmm. civilizations which have that more mobile skill set would be interesting um, with the way you've explained it. And that's just with the general explanation, of course. So cool. Yeah. It's also something that we, like, from a design point of view, uh, the meta always had a bit of an influence. Yeah. Uh, when I look back at, um, um, for, for example, the Forgotten Sifts, the Italians. Okay. Um, the... The, oh, I'm flipping on the name now, Genoese Crossbow Man, yep, sorry. Yep. Uh, <laughs> that was a bit of a counter reaction to how crazy strong cavalry archers and uh, Mangodai were at the time. Ah. Like, oh, these units are uncounterable. Let's let's find something against it. Okay. Uh, and then with, when the Rise of the Rajas came out, we saw a lot of like, okay, infantry is not often used. And then we did uh, like funny things with uh, the Malay with uh, okay. uh, their unique units and their 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 uh, bonuses as well. And that is also something that we try to see, like, instead of, like, completely changing the meta, we add some sieves that kind of break the meta. Okay, yeah. Uh, if yeah. that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of how we, we try to sometimes incorporate that into our design as well. So you'll, you'll probably see that here as well. Like, it, they're, they're more carefully focused sieves, carefully kind of, Took a bad seat to uh, back seat towards uh, Man at Arms, but yeah, yeah. we'll come back. So. All right, sweet. Well, um, you know, there's so many factors, right? We could talk about balance and and meta for for hours and hours if we if we had the time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for now, we're going to move on to some of the quality of life changes that have been discussed. Uh, I was excited when I saw you at um, E3. Right, you were up on stage at E3 discussing some of the new quality of life changes to get people really excited. And uh, I 
quality of life changes are interesting because many people brought up that, hey, this is making the game easier to play. But what I think is the pros are going to be the pros. The high level players are going to be the high level players. But what can be really difficult with Age of Empires 2 is it's kind of difficult to get started. There's so many small things <laughs> that need to happen. And with some of these quality of life changes, I really think it's going to ease newer players into the game. It's it's not going to affect anywhere above that. Hey, yeah, that is... Actually, if we look at the, the quality of life change that uh, we've done, um, our view on that is, is indeed exactly that. Like, RTS is a very difficult charm for people to get into. It's mm -hmm. very management-heavy, uh, especially a game like Age of Empires. Like, there's so much going on in your entire empire, yeah. uh, especially as you get to the late game. Uh, we want to make that more accessible. And I don't really like the word easier here because, indeed, it, it does make it easier. Sure. But especially for pro players, that also means that instead of uh, putting their skill into, for example... Um, I'll, I'll give a concrete example. Okay. Um, one of the things that we added now is the mixed queue. Very simple addition. You can now queue technologies and um, of, uh, units at the same time. Okay. So what you can do is queue uh, Loom and right after that do a villager. It's quality of life, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of nowadays RTS games probably have it. Um, and in a way, it takes a tiny, tiny bit of skill away from uh, super high level players who would now say like, oh, but I knew the exact timing of Loom and I would always go immediately to my advanced center and thank you, a villager, yeah. and not lose a single second. At the same time, like, yeah, well, now we have that second to do something else. Maybe you can uh, micromanage your scout better, uh, make sure that you are luring your boar better or trying to steal an enemy boar better. Like, who knows? Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's like all these little seconds that we try to save by streamlining the experience a bit more, you can now put into a lot of things, like micromanaging your army. I think we've, I mean, you, you stream a lot of games, you cast a lot of games, sure. uh, pro games as well. Uh, and then you, it often happens that we as spectators or you as a streamer see like, oh, why didn't he see that? Or why doesn't he do that? And by trying to remove some of like the, the clunky RTS or the lack of overview that you often have in RTS, we now allow, especially top players, to focus more on those things. So I think actually that these things will not make the game easier, but in fact, we will make the level higher on the top level and at the same time, at the lower level, make it easier for people to get into it. Yeah, someone explained, I was discussing this in my Twitch stream last week, and someone said it will not... Um, shoot, of course I should have wrote this down because it was brilliant, but it said something about how it's not going to affect the ceiling of skill in Age of Empires 2 all that much, but it will it will raise the floor. Like It'll make it easier for these yeah. these weaker players or just newer players to the game to have a good experience. Like The, the one thing that comes to mind... Uh, and I believe uh, we'll be able to show an example of it here in the video, is the farms scission. Um, yes. I mean, all memes aside, because my farms are memed up, but uh, um, <laughs> just, I, I've watched enough newer players stream uh, just through browsing, and I can't tell you how bad I feel when someone has 30 farms expire and they have to click them all individually <laughs> so they're farming yes. again and uh now we're gonna have the the auto farm reseeding which is nice uh that i think that will help a lot of people out yeah for the longest time that one was actually my favorite new addition to the game like the first thing i would do was just enable it yeah right now it's uh, disabled by default yep maybe we change that if people like it enabled by default who knows uh but it was always the first thing i did and it's it saves so much time uh, that you can now do, you know, spend on more fun things in the game. So. Yeah, and it's important to note that that's something that's an option. It's not something that happens all the time, because if you were to have all of your farms reseeding, that could actually be quite bad in early game uh, for high-level mm -hmm. stuff. But to have that option is, is really nice. And it's one of, you know, many examples of these small quality of life things, which are going to make the game so much easier to get into for people who might be just coming back. Yeah, that's actually one of the things that we try to take care of. Like the, the new things are there, but for for most of the times it's optional, yeah. and the old option is still available. I'm not saying for everything, but I think for 19% of the features, that's absolutely the case. That's awesome. Uh, so 
that's that's there. If you want to play old style, old school style, you 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 can do that. But at the same time, we really try to focus on like, hey, what what do RTS games nowadays have that Age of Empire doesn't have? Yep. And indeed, like cues, actually cues. That's that's almost a keyword of a lot of the features that we added. Mm -hmm. uh, at least quality of life features. Like we have the global cues. You can always see what's going on uh, in your empire at any point. It's like at the left uh, top left of the screen. Uh, so you can see like, oh, I'm queuing four knights here and two knights there, and uh, I'm queuing and the uh, villagers in all my towns and just like you can easily see it. Yeah, that's really uh, we nice. Have, uh, command queues. I I can't play without it anymore, really. Uh, but yeah, finally being able to say like, hey, I'm just gonna shift right click with my villager, and he will first build I don't know a house and then lumber camp and then you know less micromanagement and just tell them what to do and they'll do it. So it's it's little things like that. There's more, but. Uh, these things always stand out to me. Yeah, uh, every time I play. Well, there there's definitely been some things for me as I've I've been testing the new version and and experiencing the the beta, uh, where I go back to the current version and I think, oh man, I wish I had that. <laughs> I, it de it definitely yeah. got to that point where I was just frustrated because there's a very good thing that's out there, but it's not the game's not released yet, so we're getting close. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yep. Awesome. So I don't know if there were any other quality of life changes that you wanted to to bring up and, and discuss because I know there are quite quite a few. But uh, this this the theme so far is when it comes to the balance and really any changes or additions is being made is that the core mechanics of Age of Empires two are going to stay the same. It's going to preserve what's mm -hmm. good and it's going to add more uh, at many things that the game has been missing for a long time. Yeah, that is indeed, that has always been the goal. Like, it's still Age of Empires 2 at heart yeah. uh, in, in every sense of the world, but we worked, but we tried to, yeah, streamline it a bit more and more, and also adding more of the same good old uh, content with uh, new campaigns and uh, civilizations, of course. Oh, yeah. Well, let's, let's backtrack a little bit and talk about campaigns for a second, because um, I... As someone who actually didn't play as many of the campaigns recently, mm -hmm. I love the history of Age of Empires 2, and with the history comes the storyline of these campaigns. And I feel like it's such a beautiful thing, and, and to have a game which has intrigued so many people because of those campaigns and have new campaigns is, is I think, a really good decision from you guys. Um, is, it, is it three new campaigns? I, I believe that's what the yes. number is. Awesome. So we have three new campaigns. Uh, one about Tamerlane, which is like that was a guy that uh, I think showed up in the Genghis Khan campaign already. Mm -hmm. uh, and now he has his own campaign uh, after twenty years. Nice. Uh, a bit long overdue, but hey, he's there. <laughs> uh, and then uh, we have uh, Ivanovo uh, for the Bulgarians, and then uh, we also have the uh, I'm I'm spacing out the Kotyan Khan for the Guma. Ah. So those are new campaigns. Um, but other than that, uh, one of the things that, that we definitely see, a lot of people kind of come back from, oh, I played this game 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and they haven't really caught up with all the new content that's out there. Yeah. And now with the Definitive Edition, like everything is in one big package. Yep. So all of a sudden people will be like, oh, damn, there's 27 campaigns now. Where do I even start? Like there's so much campaigns to play. Yeah. Uh, I think if you play them back to back and win each of them from the first try, you have like 200 hours of gameplay, which is ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> but that's, that's amazing at the same time. Like uh, that was a that's a fun number to have. Well, um, but we also try to make sure that's like working through all the campaigns that we just didn't you know keep them the same. Yeah, um, yeah. We try to keep the campaigns like uh, gameplay wise, at least the original ones, uh, definitely the same. Uh, the ones from the Forgotten uh, expansions, those had a bit more thorough overhauls. Uh, and other than that, yeah, just beautifying them a bit because uh, some of the old campaigns looked pretty basic. Okay. Uh, and now we have all those new assets that we had to work, uh, that we could work with. So we're like, yeah, let's just beautify everything, uh, make it look prettier and better and streamline the whole experience a tiny bit more. So that's some, also something that we put a lot of time and effort in. Nice. I mean, that is that is huge. That's exciting because if you think about it, Hank, a 
much larger percentage of people who are uh, if, sorry. If you look at the percentage of people who play Age of Empires two, most people are just doing single player. Whether that's versus AIs, uh, which we'll get to in a second, uh, or that's versus or just playing the campaigns. And um, myself, I stream all the time. I do my community games and expert games, uh, doing mm -hmm. a lot of mainly commentary on multiplayer. Uh, while a lot of people appreciate that, very few people are actually doing multiplayer. So this will give people who might not enjoy multiplayer as much uh, to to play their campaigns again. Yeah, indeed. Like if if you just look at the campaigns, two hundred, but then you can still start normal skirmishes, standard uh, random maps or death matches or uh, any game mode you want. So there's 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 so much for single player players as well now. Uh, yeah, they they can have field day. All right. Awesome. Well, I want to move along here to the big thing that makes this the the definitive edition, I guess. Uh, um, mm -hmm. There will be graphics changes with Age of Empires 2 definitive edition, as people watching this video and people who have seen the announcement and stuff can see. Um, Age of Empires 2 is such an old game. And when I would contact my my buddies over the years and say, hey, try this game, they'd be they'd they'd look at it and immediately think, wow, this is a 20 year old game. <laughs> and uh, for, for someone, I guess, who wasn't initiated, they would be kind of turned off by that, I guess. Uh, with the definitive edition, it's, it's going to be spruced up a little bit, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so all the graphics have been redone completely uh, in uh, 4k as well. So if you have a 4k monitor, uh, you can uh, upscale everything a bit more and it looks uh, absolutely beautiful. Uh, so yeah, everything has been remade, but one thing that we absolutely wanted to keep in mind is uh, there's 20 years of memory that people have on this game. Yeah. So it's very important that uh, what makes a unit recognizable and what makes a building recognizable is absolutely kept. So for example, if you look at the skirmisher, uh, each uh, variation of the skirmisher, be it the first one, the elite or the imperial skirmisher, has a specific pattern mm -hmm. uh, on their shield. And that's what everybody knows. Like they see that shield and they know, oh, that's a skirmish. Yeah. And those are things that we always try to keep as well. Um, at the same time, and that's always a bit like the, the weird balance that we had to keep. Like we made the game prettier. So we had a lot of like shaders and bloom effects. And, you know, we, we've had some, we heard some feedback on the bloom effect. Um, and a lot of those shaders make the game pretty, but also make it a bit harder to read. Yeah. Right, so, so that's that's it's a uh, it's a fine that balance. Is feedback right? that we got. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I, sorry to interrupt. Um, but I, I feel like again, it's it's a balance that you guys have to try and strike, and uh, it it makes me confident because Forgotten Empires were were tight knit and hearing the community before uh, there was a plan for Age of Empires Two Definitive Edition. Right, so you guys uh, yeah. are are aware of the balance that needs to be struck there. Uh, one thing I think that needs to be mentioned as well with this is I remember with some of the current expansions not being able to distinguish buildings for example I think it was Malians and Ethiopians I couldn't tell the difference between a barracks and a stable because they look so similar but then after mm -hmm. uh, after a little bit of time like a few weeks it was fairly easy for me to distinguish between them so we have a lot of people who are used to the way something has looked for uh, for 20 years it might take just a little bit of adapting as well. I think people in the community need to r realize that. Like, you know, yeah. you're, it's going to look fine. <laughs> it's just that <laughs> you you remember what this looked like before, uh, is my point. Yes. Exactly. And that's that's really what we went for. Uh, at the very first time, when, like, at some point, like, uh, we were working on DE, and then at some point, a lot of the new graphics came. And we're like, oh, wow, OK, that's different. Yeah. Uh, but then you play for a few days, and you, you just don't uh, acknowledge the differences anymore. It's more like, yeah, that's a knight. And it's always been a knight. Yep. And then you go back to the old version. And you're like, OK, that's also a knight, but I'm, I'm also used to the new one. Uh, so that was very important. Like, if you just play a few games, um, I, from my experience, I would say you get used to it pretty quickly, to new graphics. And they are indeed very recognizable stuff that was definitely the goal awesome exciting stuff so the, the the last big thing i think when it comes to any game but especially age of empires 2 
is the performance aspect. Uh, in April of 2013, Age of Empires 2 HD was released, and that has always been notorious for pathfinding problems, drops, uh, issues with lag, and basically anything that could possibly be a struggle for a game uh, Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition struggled with. Uh, but it's worth noting that back then, um, at least this is just a theory of mine anyway, I don't think Microsoft ever really thought that Age of Empires 2 would explode as it did. And so there might have been a lack of uh, prioritization, I guess, on those things. And they might have been more thinking about the people who wanted to replay an old game for the expansions, for the single player, and leave it at that. Uh, there's been some conversation regarding the servers for Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition uh, and all things related to performance. So, Cision, I'd like to hear a little bit of your thoughts on, on how, uh, I guess, how different the performance should be on Definitive Edition compared to HD, because as far as I know, uh, the way the game is run has been changed. All right. So um, you did mention three things that I definitely want to go over there, and that's uh, performance, uh, servers, and bot finding. So uh, if we look at performance, um, that is definitely the main reason why we, we run the beta. If you make a, a game for PC, um, you have people from all over the world with all kinds of different configurations that kind of run to run Age of Empires. Like, that's what they want. That's just what they want. Uh, but at the same time, you have this uh, definitive edition with like the beautiful new graphics, uh, especially when you run on 4K. It's like all of a sudden your uh, the, the graphic load that the game needs to handle mm -hmm. is so much heavier than originally. Yeah. So then you have this weird balance that you need to strike. Okay, it still needs to look way better than the original, but at the same time it also needs to run uh, run well. So we did a lot of uh, performance improvements, uh, both. Uh, on how we render things and how the simulation works. So, especially in the old game, um, if you have uh, a long game, let's say Black Forest, something like that, yeah. uh, you have a lot of battles going on, uh, the game gets a bit sloggy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that is something, yeah, we all know it. Uh, we put a lot of work into that uh, very recently still to improve that. Uh, we found a lot of things uh, from like old pathfinding was like, hey, why do we do that? Why do we calculate, I don't know, thousands and thousands and thousands of paths uh, per uh, 16 milliseconds or something? Okay. It's like, that's, that's way too much in way too little time. Mm. Uh, so yeah, we did a lot of improvements there as well for renderer as well. Um, and yeah, we will also keep on doing that. Uh, it's, it's very important to notice that uh, once this game gets released, um, there will be follow-up. The, the Microsoft will not just, you know, release the game and drop it, and <laughs> it yeah. will be not be anything for a while. Uh, that is not happening. So even if we see like afterwards, like, hey, we need, we want more, or we want more performance, or whatever, uh, we will be there. We will be there to to keep on working on it. Um, so that's one thing. That's just like how the game is in single player. Mm -hmm. Uh, then we go to multiplayer. That's where the servers come in. So uh, that part of the game has been completely uh, built from the ground up. Previously, uh, the game ran in peer-to-peer, -peer, and that basically meant that everybody was connected to everybody. Okay. Uh, but that also meant that everybody kind of ran the game at the pace of the slowest user. Okay. So if you were like seven guys sitting in a room together, and you had one guy on the other end of the world, uh, you would all run, yeah, depend on that one guy on the end of the world. Uh, with the new system, that has changed. So what happens now is that uh, you all connect to a server, uh, and basically uh, you kind of run at that speed. The game runs at that speed. So gotcha. all the seven players that are now in the room together, they will play the game uh, as much, sorry, as, as their connection to the server. Ah, OK. Um, so, and then the player who is on the other side of the world will also play at that speed. Okay. But he will not drag down all the others anymore. Yeah. So, especially in international games, it will be quite a difference. <laughs> okay. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, when you think of the competitive scene, um, there's certainly a lot of lag between two individuals. Uh, if you have someone, say, from... South, I think South America and and Asia would be the worst combination currently. Um, but yeah. I could be wrong on that. Um, so 
So on that topic, because I'm actually curious myself here. So let's just say you have uh, Mr. Yo and you have Fire. Uh, Fire is a Brazilian crow, and then you have Mr. Yo, who's who's from China. Um, and let's say normally uh, the problem child, so to speak, would be Yo, as as he's from China. Is is there going to be an extreme difference in how they're both able to run the game? Like my worry would be is that one player. Uh, is running the game just fine while the other one tends to lag a little bit? Or is the point of the server to kind of uh, remove that that distance between the players and thus make the performance better for, for both of them? So one thing that, uh, that not a single game can solve okay. is distance between players. Yeah. Uh, that is just inherent to physics. If yeah. you're at a certain distance, you have a certain latency. However, what we do have is, for example, if... Um, Mr. Yo and Fire decide, okay, let's play on... I'm just going to throw something out there. Let's play on the Western server. Okay. Uh, let's say it's in the middle of them. They both have a deep ping to it. Let's say they have a ping of, I don't know, 300 milliseconds to it. And both players will play at a speed of 300 milliseconds. Okay, yeah. Very yeah. But right now, if they would connect to each other, that delay might be 500 milliseconds. Okay. So that's what they would gain. Those 200 milliseconds. Okay, so perfect. Even one v one, you could have the improvement. Awesome. So it doesn't it doesn't hurt one player more than the other. All it does is it it uh, limits the distance between each player. That's cool. It it could it could it I could mean, if if um, if Fire would say, oh, I'm hosting on South, uh, then he has a, lo- a lower latency. To his server, I so see. he will have a slight advantage. Okay, but even then, it will still be better than the original. So yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's. I mean, you have the HD edition. We have user patch on Voobly, uh, but everything has always been peer to peer. So this is the one thing that really excites me because it, it definitely stands out uh, when it comes to performance. So I'm excited to see what improvements can be there. And uh, let's be honest, it, the competitive scene. It's going to help, but those guys are normally pretty good anyway when it comes to connections and stuff. I think Mm -hmm. where it will really help is your average user playing in large team games with people from all over the world because Age of Empires, even though it is an old game, uh, tends to get people from everywhere, and that's what's caused a lot of these problems. Exactly. That's that's also one thing that I come some people from uh, Australia and New Zealand who mm-hmm. actually were talking to us and they were saying like, yeah, I'm, I'm looking so much forward to it. Yeah. Because every time I try to join a game, people would boot me for, for being from Australia or New Zealand. Yeah. Because other people are like, the, the player base is more heavily focused in uh, Europe or, or uh, USA at the time that he was playing. So it's like, oh, people don't want to play with me because I like their games. Yeah. But now with the E, it doesn't, they don't like the games anymore. People just play at whatever their connection to the nearest server is. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, I I will admit, if I'm online, uh, I'm in the United States, and if I'm online in the evening, it's normally people from North America, South America, and then you have a lot of people who are from um, like New Zealand and Australia getting online in the mornings. And so (laughs) my struggle has always been uh, it lags more with the South American players, so I have to accept it if I play with them, and I'd have to accept it if I played with the people from New Zealand or Australia as well. So the fact that, you know, so many of these issues can be avoided across the board, um, or not avoided, sorry, but just be diminished, is something to look forward to. Yeah. Sweet. Well, um, we've gone over a lot of things here, um, and I'm really excited. The release date for Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition is set for mid-November. Um Cision, since you kind of have the floor here and there's a lot of people listening to this, wasn't sure if there was any, anything else you wanted to bring up and discuss before I let you go today. Uh, yes, actually, one thing, um, because if this was a Twitch chat, people would be shouting, Pathfinding, Pathfinding, Pathfinding. <laughs> oh, we didn't get to that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, yes, I definitely want to talk a bit about Pathfinding. So, um, um, Pathfinding, uh, inherently... Uh, we've we done a lot of work on the pathfinding, like both performance-wise, uh, but also functionality-wise. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Like, in a way, the pathfinding still feels the same. You still have your formations. Uh, this is not uh, StarCraft where you kind of have the block movement. 
uh, no, we still have formations. You still have units uh, hard blocking each other. Uh, there can be overlaps within formations, but that's also something that you can find in the original game. But but at its core, we tried to keep the path findings the same. However, what we did do was improve the existing path finding. Okay. And um, we will definitely... Um, okay. Uh, so, yeah, we will make a video. Uh, will be on our YouTube or on the Age of Empires channel. Uh, where we will uh, kind of talk uh, our way through some scenarios. Because that's kind of what we did. Like, we made a scenario in uh, the original game, and um, here's a patch version as well, and in the HD version. And then we kind of ran simulations. Like, hey, how, how does patrol work? How does uh, a, a, a trading route work? Like, okay, you mm -hmm. have two markets on each side, you run uh, cards through it. When does it choke up? Uh, things like that. And I think for me, the most impressive test uh, was the uh, test with the trade cards. So what we did, we had a trade card on each side of the map, and we just spammed uh, trade cards, mm -hmm. and we let them trade with each other. And then we were like, okay, when does it choke? When is the trade uh, route completely blocked? Okay. Because we, we kind of like to you know run it through a town, there's some villagers, there's some buildings blocking it, like when does it choke up? And I think in the original game, it showed up at like roughly 100 trade cards, uh, which went crazy inefficiently at the end. When they were <laughs> bumping into each other the whole time, they were changing their course. Uh, it was almost nasty to look at. Um, and then we did it with uh, the EPOM finally. And I think we had 200 trade cards. Uh, and it, at that point, well, the game didn't choke up anymore. Nice. It still ran. It was a bit wonky, but it's still red. Yeah, it's still uh, still gonna have some issues with that many trade cards for sure. <laughs> but yeah, it's better. <laughs> like, yeah, who makes two hundred trade cards in a game? Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, at at the same time, I was very impressed to see that because I was like, oh, this is actually really nice to look at. Mm -hmm. And it, especially a lot of players like to play in Black Forest. It's a bit tight in the choke points. Uh, how many times does it happen that your trade route clogs up? Uh, you need to delete, I don't know, a castle that's in the middle, uh, just saying something. Yep. Uh, but that, that, that has not happened anymore. And that's actually really, really nice to see. But there will be more like small changes, small tweaks. Um, at the same time, when we, go, when we talk back about balance, this is one of the reasons that we also want to keep uh, pathfinding functionally the same. Because if you were to say, oh, let's turn pathfinding into like the blob kind of movements that you see in StarCraft, balance completely changes. Mm. And we already noticed that slightly, very slightly, with the changes that we've done now. Okay. Like, um, indeed, the, the trade, trade routes are now so much more efficient. Does that mean that the Spanish uh, trade bonus is now also more efficient? We uh, don't know. Yeah, but we'll yeah. see. And if, if it turns out, then, then we can tweak it. Uh, but even pathfinding will also slightly um, affect uh, balance. Okay. And there was also another test that we did with uh, uh, just unit AI and how they pick their targets and how quickly they pick their targets. Uh, we also noticed that fights uh, go a bit faster than in the past because units are now much smarter in picking their targets. Uh, so that's another potential balance change. Yeah, that's uh, that true. We see across the game. Yeah, we'll have to see yeah. you know how certain oh. units react. Uh, to the fights now, uh, other units that yep. might have struggled will now be stronger than before. It, it might be. It, it just might be. But at the same time, that's also what you want. You want reactive units. You want responsive units. Uh, and you want good pathfinding. Yeah. Uh, and that, that, to an extent, it might affect balance. It might also not, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, that's not a bad thing. Then units are functioning as they should. And then you can yes. you can adjust the balance from there. It's just not at all a bad thing if a few units are stronger. It's it's because it's how they should have been in the first place. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yeah, that's that's kind of the approach that we took to pathfinding. We we absolutely feel that it's it's better, but at heart it's still the same uh, because it's it's still age. We said it at the very beginning of the of the conversation. Like this is still age of empires in every sense of the world. Uh, and it's also the goal of, of, of uh, uh, Age of Empires 2DE. Uh, we want to bring everybody together and say, like, hey, this is the best Age of Empires 2 out there. Uh, come play here. That's, mm -hmm. that's the whole goal. And Microsoft is also very serious about it. Uh, I think I also mentioned it earlier that uh, when this game is released, it's not just going to be released. Uh, it's going to be released and it's going to be continued to be worked on. Yeah. Uh, so people 
people uh, can absolutely see and know like, hey, Microsoft is serious about this. Uh, this is a big game. Uh, this is a big title. Uh, and yeah, we won't support it. So uh, you've, you've said multiple times that Microsoft and Forgotten Empires are not just going to launch the game and abandon it, which is a great sign. Um, so the question now is, um, what do you expect uh, as far as the community goes? Because a lot of people are bringing up the fact that it's such an old game. There's different ways to play it. And with a new release, people are worried that there might be some type of split or divide amongst people who play the game. Uh, so what do you have? What's your take on that? Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's an absolutely uh, fair assessment. Uh, I think there's a lot of people who have that question. Uh, but at the same time, that's this is the whole reason why we're doing uh, the definitive edition of H2 mm -hmm. is to to try and take the best from all bits and, and, and all versions and all ways of playing that are in there and put them into one package and, and support that package going forward. Uh, that is the whole reason that, that we're doing this. Yeah. Um, and we will also just keep on listening. But also, if you see at like which areas of the game that we touched, we basically touched every uh, part of the game. So it's it's not just like oh we're we're really focusing on uh, multiplayer or we're really focusing uh, AI or we're really focusing on hey no we did everything basically <laughs> there's not a bit that has been uh, untouched almost uh, with the definitive edition yeah uh, which also made us realize this is a damn big game <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was like when we start working on this it's like this is not just one game that we're remastering. This is basically six games we're remastering. Yeah. This is yeah. Age of Kings and then all the expansions, which has so much, much content into them. Um, and when we get feedback from people uh, through the beta, but also through social media uh, and through our email or just from conversation at Gamescom or Retreat, um, we saw that a lot of people look for very different things in Age of Empires. Uh, you have people who are super passionate about the competitive scene. You have people who are super passionate about uh, their historical campaigns. But you have also people who are passionate about um, um, the history that is presented in the game. Like, oh, I am Lithuanian. You're adding the Lithuanians to the game. So I, I'm at one hand very proud and happy <laughs> to be yeah. represented in the game. But at the same time, it's like, oh, you better do it well. Because, <laughs> you know, it's people's history that you're that you're trying to display. Yeah. So yeah, people are looking for so many different things into the game and we try to uh, provide something for everyone basically. Yeah, I think that yeah, I that's, think that that's... It, it's important that people, uh, I guess, realize the effort is being made in terms of um, how, how broad a spectrum you guys need to, to hit with this. Um, whereas like with the HD edition, it was pretty much just a slight update on graphics and no change otherwise. Whereas mm -hmm. here, you know, we're, we're having new expansions, new campaigns for the people that like that, better performance for the people that, that need that, and then quality of life features for people who might be very new to the game. So that's, that's exciting stuff to hear. And that's something that as a content creator has always been hard for me to balance. I, I mean, I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a caster. A lot of people want, I mean, I, I could list half a dozen things that people request that I cast that are completely different. And so yeah. <laughs> uh, even from like just playing the game, uh, it's, it's even crazier. So uh, I, I'm excited. You know, two years ago yeah. is actually around the time I ended up committing to full-time Age of Empires. Um, you know, I heard about Age of Empires 2 DE. I was excited because we really need one place for everyone to go for their Age of Empires 2 gameplay. Um, so I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, obviously, for those here on YouTube, I'm gonna have tons of content, uh, playing, casting, and and whatever it may be, and then uh, on on Twitch as well for those that like to watch me stream. Um, Cision, it was a pleasure, man. Uh, I'm I'm really pumped for this. I'm sure that you're gonna be keeping an eye out on videos and streams and subreddit <laughs> at virtually everywhere. I'm sure you're gonna be all over the internet once the game is out. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. And I, I, I think that's that's definitely the last thing that uh, I want to add here is 
um, we we are listening. Like we have always listened to the community. Mm. Like what do people want? What do people like? Uh, we try it to our best of our abilities to to provide that, and, and we will keep on doing so. So we we try to with DE to uh, add so much things to the game for for everyone. But then after it's released. Uh, we're, we're, we're just going back to the community and I was like, hey, guys, what's, what more do you want? Yep. And we have a list of things that we still want to add to the game. Like Age of Empires is so big, you can still you know, add more things if you want. Uh, not new civilizations, by the way. Uh, we have enough of those. Uh, <laughs> but, but other than that, we, we know that people will still want more and we will listen to them and, and see what we can make happen. Awesome. Well, um, you know, six months from now, a year from now, we might be talking about so many new additional changes to Age of Empires 2 DE. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to the launch. And I, it's great to hear that you're going to be there supporting as well as everyone on your team and then Microsoft, of course. Yep. Well, thanks again for joining me. Um, I, I hope that Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition for all of us uh, is released and is a very good state and exciting. And it was a great time catching up. All right. Thanks, man.